What do you think about censorship in this space? In this difficult space where so much is controlled by, not controlled, but influenced by advertisements from big pharma. And science can even be influenced by big pharma. Where do you lean on this? Should we allow, should we lean towards freedom and just allow all the voices, even those that go against the scientific consensus? Is that one way to fight the, the science that is funded by big pharma? Or is that do more harm than good? having too many voices that are contending here? Should the ultimate battle be fought in the space of uh, scientific publications? And particularly in the uh, era of COVID, where there are large public health ramifications to the this public discourse, uh, the ante is way up. So I don't have a simple answer to that. Uh, I think everyone's allowed their own opinion, I don't think everyone's allowed their own scientific facts. And how we develop a mechanism that's other than an open internet where whoever is shouting the loudest gets the most clicks and the, uh, rage creates value on the internet. I think that's not a good mechanism for working this out. And I don't think we have one. I don't have a solution to this. I mean, ideally, if we had a philosopher king, we could have a panel of people who were not conflicted by rigid opinions decide on what the boundaries of public discourse might be. I don't think it should be fully open. I don't think people who are making um, who are committed to an anti-vaccine position and will tailor their interpretation of complex scientific data to support their opinion, I think that can be harmful. Constraining their speech can be harmful as well. So I don't have an answer here, but yeah. I tend to believe that it's more dangerous to censor anti-vax messages. The way to defeat anti-vax messages is by being great communicators, by being great scientific communicators. So it's not that we need to censor the things we don't like. We need to be better at communicating the things we do like, or the things that we do believe represent the a deep scientific truth. Because um, I think if you censor, you get worse at doing science and you give the wrong people power. So I, I, I tend to believe that you should give power to the individual scientists and also give them the responsibility of being better educators, communicators, expressors of scientific ideas, put pressure on them to release data, to release that data in a way that's easily consumable, not just like uh, very difficult to understand, but in a way that it can be understood by a large number of people. So the battle should be fought in the open space of ideas versus in, um, in the quiet space of journals. I think we no longer have that comfort, especially at the highest of stakes. So this kind of idea that a couple of peer reviewers decide the fate of billions is, is doesn't seem to be sustainable, especially given a, a very real observation now that, um, that the reason Robert Malone has a large following is there's a deep distrust of institutions, deep distrust of scientists, of science as an institution, of uh, power centers, of companies, of, of everything, and perhaps rightfully so. But the way to defend against that is not for the powerful to build a bigger wall. It's for the powerful to be authentic um, and maybe to a lot of them to get fired and for new minds, for new fresh scientists, uh, ones who are more authentic, more real, better communicators to step up. So I, 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 fear, I fear censorship because it feels like censorship is a even harder job to do it well than 
being good communicators. And it seems like it's always the C students that end up doing the censorship. <laughs> that it's like, it's always the incompetent people and not just the incompetent, but the biggest whiners. So like what happens is the people that get the most emotional and the most outrage will drive the censorship. And it doesn't seem like reason drives the censorship. That's just ob objectively observing how censorship seems to work in this current. So there's so many forms of censorship. You know, if you look at the Soviet Union with the propaganda or Nazi Germany, it's a very different level of censorship. People, people tend to conflate all of these things together. You know, social media trying desperately to have trillions uh, or uh, hundreds of billions of exchanges a day and like, try to make sure that their platform is has some uh, semblance of like, quote, healthy conversations. Like people just don't go insane. They actually like using the platform and they, they censor based on that. That's a different level of censorship. But even there, you can really run afoul of the people that get the, the, the whiny C students controlling too much of the censorship. I, I believe the, you should you should actually put the responsibility on the self-proclaimed holders of truth, aka scientists, at being better communicators. I agree with that. I'm not uh, advocating for any kind of censorship, but uh, Marshall McLuhan was very influential when I was in college, and his uh, that meme, uh, the medium is the message. It's a little bit hard to understand when you're comparing radio to TV and saying radio's hotter or TV's hotter or something. But we now have the medium as the message in a way that we've never seen, we've never imagined before, where rage and anger and polarization uh, are what drives the um, traffic on the internet. And we don't... It's a question of building the commons. Ideally, I don't know how to get there, so I'm not pretending to have a solution, but the commons of discourse about this particular issue, about vaccines, is has been largely destroyed by the edges, by the drug companies and the advocates on the one side and the um, people who just criticize and um, think that even though the data are flawed, that... Um, there's no way vaccines can be beneficial. And to have those people screaming at each other does nothing to improve the health of the 95% of the people in the middle who want to un know what the rational way to go forward is and protect their families from COVID and live a good life and be able to participate in the economy. And that's the problem. I don't have a solution. <laughs>